Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 23 of this Flutter course. As you saw in the previous chapter, we talked about cleaning up our registration flow so that when we tap on registration or the register button, we actually send an email confirmation to the user. And we saw that we go to the email confirmation view and before we even get there, we then receive our email confirmation in our inbox. So that all worked very well, except for the fact that now a user who hasn't registered, uh, who hasn't verified their email account can still end up in the main UI of our application. And that's what we're going to fix in this chapter. So as the um, title shows here, or as the caption shows here, what we need to do is to ensure that uh, we first, before we continue with the chapter, we need to make sure that we've logged out of the application. So um, now that you're in the main UI of the application, let's just go in here and say log out and we're logging out to end up on the login screen. I'm, gonna, I'm also gonna bring up Visual Studio Code as we left it before. So what we need to do now, I'm go going to close uh, other tabs except for the login view, <clears throat> excuse me. And you can see in here, right after we're signing with email and password right now, we're sending the user to the notes route and we need to clean this up. So uh, what we need to do is just to get the current user from Firebase and uh, I'm gonna bring up the correct, correct caption as well. And I'm gonna change the screen layout a little bit um, so you see the code better. So as you can see, the caption says you need to add an if statement before you send the user to the main UI of the application uh, to make sure that the user is verified, okay? So in order to do that, we also need to get the current user. So we're going to say final user is equal to Firebase off instance, uh, Firebase off instance, and current user. Okay, so that's for the current user. And we're going to say if the user and uh, optional, you see, we need to optionally access that email verified or false. So when we get a Boolean value here, either this returns a true or we reuse false. So in here we say user's email is verified. Otherwise user's email, uh, if I can uh, spell it, is not verified, okay? So now we have the two conditions in there. So what we need to do now is to grab this code that we had from before. You can see it sends the user to the main UI of the application. And of course, that needs to happen only if the user has uh, uh, basically verified their email address. So grab that code and place it in user email is verified, okay, in here. And in a case that the user email is not verified, then we kind of need to do the same code but instead of going to the notes route, which is the main UI of the application, we actually know we need to go to the verify email route. If you remember from the previous chapters in uh, route start, we've already defined verify email route, okay? So let's go back in our login view and then paste the same code, except for going to notes route, we're gonna go to uh, verify email routes, okay? So, really all we have to do for this chapter. So it's just cleaning up the logic one step at a time, okay? And that's okay. Some chapters are gonna be long, some chapters are gonna be short. It's actually quite refreshing even for me to have some shorter chapters. So um, now what we need to do is let's put this to test. And as you can see, what we're gonna do is to remove that test user again from Firebase console and test the entire flow again. So I'm gonna do a hot restart here and just to make sure that the state is completely restarted. I'm gonna bring up uh, Firebase console. Let's go to our application, which for me is called My Notes Flutter Project. I'm gonna go to authentication and remove that test user that I created here. Okay, delete and do another hot restart just to make sure the cache is invalidated if there's any cache in there. And uh, what we need to do now is to just, oops, uh, what we need to do now is to do kind of like the same registration again. So I'm going to go to the register page here, and then I'm going to go to your enter your email here, and I'm going to write the same email address to register the user again, foobar bath, press the register button, and we end up here. Then I'm going to do the same hack as we did before, uh, press the back button, and then go to the login screen. I'm going to type the same uh, credentials and say foobar bath. If everything's worked according to our plan, 
upon pressing the login button, the code is going to end up in here saying that the user's email is not verified and it's going to remove the login route from uh, from the stack and push the verify email route on the screen. Okay, so both. And that is exactly what we're getting here. You can see we're going to the verify email view as we planned. Okay, as I mentioned, this chapter was a short one and that's actually really good. So what we need to do now is to focus on what we're going to do in the next chapter. As you can see, it says our authentication logic is all over the UI and we need to make a service for the authentication. You see, up until this point, we've been working with Firebase directly in the source code in that we've been like writing Firebase auth code pretty much in our UI. Now, you may think that, well, that's okay. I mean, if you're if you don't come from a software development background, you may think that that is fine and it should, as long as it works. But uh, the software development industry has shown us over and over again that the saying of, oh, if, it, if it's working, if it's not broken, don't fix it. That that doesn't that doesn't really apply to all cases, as we've seen uh, in the case of, for instance, log4j. Uh, it was working, but then there was a security flaw, and everybody had to go uh, to their code base and fix everything. So work tirelessly so over the weekends. So the code works, but there's a problem with it. In that here you have your user interface. So the code is quite high level. It's like literally the user is here, and then we have our user interface here, and then we have like the code that we've written uh, like a little bit more low level, like our if statements, and then Firebase is sitting all the way down here. And we're like exposing this Firebase layer all the way to our UI layer. So the UI is talking directly with a layer of the code that is so level that they shouldn't have direct connection with each other. So <clears throat> if we're not from a software development background, this may be a little bit alien to you, but software developers really like to make sure things are uh, come like in their own compartments. So what we need to do is in order to get ready for the next chapter is just get a good cup of coffee or tea because the next chapter is actually going to be a long one and it's going to be a complicated one. But I'm going to do my best to explain all the concepts as good as I can. But just know that the next chapter is going to be a big one. Okay, so uh, grab your refreshments, juice, tea, water, coffee, whatever you want, and I'll see you in the next chapter.